Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be testing out a new bike rack. This is the Saris Door Country Motorized Bicycle Rack. Now it has a motor in this column back here that automatically lowers and raises this rack with the push of a button, which makes it easier to load heavy e-bikes on this rack. So if you're an older person and had a hard time lifting them up, this might be a good option for you. Now there are some negatives to this bike rack that I didn't particularly care for which I'll get into later on in this video and I do want to mention that they did send me this bike rack for testing and review and I'll leave a link down below in the description if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these after you guys watch the, the video if you think it's right for you. This rack is rated for up to 60 pounds per bike so you do, guys do have to watch what e-bikes you put on here. The electric is just under 60 pounds if you remove the battery. A lot of other e-bikes some are up to somewhere around 75 80 pounds so you do have to watch what bikes you're putting on this rack but for a lot of bikes it might be okay for like the electric or the electric xp now you can only put bikes on this rack that have tires up to three inch tires because these straps aren't really long enough to go around a four inch fat tire bike it would have been nice to see a bigger strap on this and maybe have them moved out slightly or have some kind of adjustability there on the width of these bottom platforms so you are limited on your tire size and this is not rated for rv use so most bike racks aren't you have to buy a specific rack for rv use so keep that in mind and this thing works off of a seven pin plug so if your vehicle doesn't have a seven pin outlet on it for a trailer then this bike rack probably will not work you may be able to use an adapter to a four pin but might have to redo some wiring on it because it uses the auxiliary pin in that plug to get power to this rack so we'll get into some more details here and show you guys exactly how this thing works but i got to tell you for some people this rack is going to work really well and going to be amazing and for others maybe not so much and the first thing that i really really absolutely love about this rack is that it has tail lights in the back and they're really nice ones too so it has full size tail lights with turn signals reverse lights and I'll show you guys how that works here coming up. And also that this rack comes completely assembled when you get it. There's really no assembly required at all. It comes pretty much completely assembled, which is nice. And it does fold up pretty nice and has a set of wheels underneath for rolling it around in your garage. Those are some of the main features that I like. And of course, obviously the power down feature, that's pretty cool too as well. So another feature that I like is that both of these clamps have a locking mechanism and there's like a metal, metal band in these holders here that give it a little bit more security here these would be a little bit harder to break or cut so really nice that it has a locking mechanism on both of these another feature of this bike rack is you push and turn the center knob down and then push this lever down and you can actually tilt the rack down to make it easier to get in the back of your suv or your vehicle and i don't know if it's down far enough to where i can put this tailgate all the way down no so you won't be able to put your tailgate all the way down with it down but certain SUVs, it might allow you to open the trunk like that. Now, one of the first downfalls of this rack, and some other racks are similar, but you have to have the outside bike off first before you can remove the inside bike because this is over top of this bike. Now, if for some reason you were able to put it underneath, it may work that you could get the inside bike off, but you're not gonna be able to lower the rack down and wheel it off, which is what really anybody buying this rack is probably gonna be buying it for. So to remove the inside bike, like I said, you have to remove the outside bike first. It might not be a deal breaker for a lot of people and many people might not care about, but it is something I wanted to mention. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If you do, please make sure you guys subscribe so you can see more content like this in the future. And please leave a comment down below, guys. It really helps my channel out a lot with YouTube helping to recommend my videos with the more interaction I get. So really appreciate the help, guys. All right, so to put this thing on your vehicle, it's pretty easy. And what's nice is they do give you a decent storage cover to protect this and keep the dust off while you have it stored in your garage. Now, I don't think this is a transportation cover for going down the road because there is no way of mounting this onto the rack. It would have been nice to see some clips or something and it would have been nice if this was a cover for going down the road to keep your electronics and everything out of the weather. Now they're, I'm sure they're weatherized and shouldn't give you a problem but it would have been nice to have a nice cover going down the road if you weren't using the bike rack and it was still on your vehicle now i'm sure maybe you could put this on and wrap a strap or two around there and it would stay on there but i'm not sure how it would hold up going down the road because like i said it doesn't seem to be made for that to put this on your vehicle all you do is pull this pin out here flip this thing down and then put the pin back in 
Now I did notice it's a little bit tight to get the pin back in, but I guess tight is better than loose. And for those of you that have a hard time carrying heavy things, it does have a set of wheels that you can wheel it around. And if your vehicle was low enough, you could actually plug this into your vehicle, hit the button, and this would come up to the height of your hitch and you just slide it right in. However, I think my truck's gonna be too high for that, but let's go put it in there and see how it works. All right, guys, so I went to mount this to my 2005 Ford F-150, but I couldn't get it to work. And I wasn't sure if the bike rack didn't work or if it was something wrong with the plug on my truck, but it's definitely the plug on my truck because I've been trying for a few weeks now to get it to work. And I've read some places where you have to have a trailer hooked up and it has to sense the trailer for my truck to get power to the auxiliary prong on the seven pin outlet that this bike rack has. I tried for weeks, can't get it to work. So if any of you know of maybe something I could change, a fuse or something that might make that work in my 2005 F-150, let me know. But my brother stopped by today with his 2022 Ford F-350 Super Duty. We put it in here to try it to see if it works and it works perfect. So what's really nice about this rack is that it has a power up and down feature. You should have the truck running and you just turn the key to open. You hit the down button and this thing automatically goes down and allows you to load your bikes a lot easier down closer to the ground so you don't really have to pick the bikes up real far to put them on there. So if you can't lift a lot of weight, this is gonna be really nice for a lot of people. Now his Ford F350 does sit up pretty high and he didn't have the attachment for his three inch receiver because he has the heavy duty uh, tow package on here. So normally this would be straight in there if we had that adapter, but I just slid it in there for now just for this video. But once the bike rack is down, it does drop down. I would say about 10 and a half inches is what this rack drops down. So 10 and a half inches. Now if this truck sat lower, you wouldn't even really have to pick this rack up to put it into your hitch. You could leave it on the ground, plug it in, and then hit the button and it would actually raise this up and you could slide it right into your hitch. Now, it does it automatically up and down once you hit the button and you can just push the pause button wherever you need to. So like I said, you can have the rack on the ground, on the wheels, push the button, it would come up to the height of your hitch and you could slide it right in. Now, like I said, on his F-350, it's not gonna work because it sits too high, but this is gonna be really nice for people to be able to load their bikes on there without having to pick them up far. So it would actually be up higher if that was in the hitch straight, but on this F-350, it probably would put it around 10 inches off the ground if that rack was in there straight. But we're gonna go ahead and throw it back in my 2005 Ford F-150 and I'll show you a few different things on there and then I'll show you how some bikes go on this rack. And that's one thing that's gonna be really hard for a few people is how to mount certain bikes on here. For some people, it's gonna work excellent and for some people, not so much and I'll show you that towards the end of this video. Real quick while we have this plugged in is it does have a nice set of brake lights in here. Uh, these are the running lights. It has brake lights, reverse lights. I'll hit the brake and show you guys. All right guys, so there's the brake light. Got the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and it also has reverse lights and four ways if you need them. So really nice. That's one thing that I wish my other racks had. If you guys watched my bike rack review, on the, I believe it was the Overdrive Sport. I bought an additional set of LED lights and was gonna mount them on there, but it was still really hard to figure out where to mount them and how to use them with a the cover. But I love the features of these lights on this rack. And when, when it's not in use, you just fold these up like this. And that's only loose, guys, because the, uh, the three to two adapter is not in this hitch. It wouldn't be loose like that normally but it has a nice grab handle here for you to be able to carry the bike rack once it's folded up. And you could go ahead, put it back up and drive down the road like that if you needed to. Now, like I said earlier in the video, it does come with that cover for storage, but I don't believe it's gonna be good for driving down the road. You might be able to wrap a strap around it to keep it on, but I'm not sure it would hold up in wind because it didn't seem like it had uh, any straps or anything and wasn't really meant for that. So there you go, once it goes back up, you just take the key out and you're good to go. Hey guys, check this out. My brother just showed me this, watch this. That's awesome, that's a front camera. <laughs> it shoots out a little sprayer to clean that camera off right out of the Ford emblem. <laughs> that's so cool, that's crazy. 
All right, guys, so I had an idea. Since I couldn't get it to work on my Ford F-150 through the auxiliary prong on my seven pin plug, I took the plug apart and I took the power wire off of number four black and I moved it over one spot to the number three brown, which is the running lights. So hopefully it doesn't draw enough power to where it blows the running light fuse, but we're gonna plug this back into my F-150 and see if I can get it to work. So another thing this rack comes with is it comes with a locking hitch pin that is actually an anti-rattle pin. You have to make sure you install it the correct way. You have to go through the passenger side towards the driver's side when you install that so that when this tightens up, it actually pulls this up the correct way and tightens in your hitch to keep it from rattling. And when you fold this down and put this pin through here, they also give you a bolt that you have to install underneath here that prevents that from moving after you put this down into the position that you need it to for putting bikes on. So I would recommend putting that in there just for extra security to keep that from moving. So let's see if it works on the truck now. All right, so now we're gonna see if the lights all work. There's the brake lights. Let's try the four ways. There's the four ways. And let's try reverse lights. And there's the reverse lights. So for some reason, guys, and what I can't figure out is there's only a reverse light on the right-hand side. The left-hand side has a red lens in it and it does not light up. So I'm not sure why only half a reverse light comes on and I don't know why they wouldn't have put another reverse light in the driver's side tail light. So if any of you know why they did it like that, please let me know down below in the comments. But that's one thing I would like to see different is a reverse light in this side as well. So I'm just letting it go down, guys, as far as it'll go. And I'm gonna show you here in a little bit a few things that I don't like about this rack. But once it, when it's down there, it's a little bit wobbly, but it's not wobbly when it's back up. I think I had it set up to go this way. Okay, so this is the only thing I, I personally don't like about this rack. Some of you might like this style clamping system, but I feel like it's a little bit finicky the way that you have to clamp these bikes on here. And I'll show you why in a little bit. All right, so there's one bike on there. Now this rack is rated for 60 pounds per bike. The electric's just over 60 pounds with the battery installed, which it is. Normally I would recommend taking the battery out, but we're just testing the max capacity of this rack to see if it will lift it. So my son's gonna go ahead and get up on there. He's just under 60 pounds, about 57 pounds. And we're gonna see if this thing will lift 120 pounds up. So hit the plus button. And it is going up. A little bit slow, but it's going up. Very slow, actually. But that's okay, as long as it goes up. And there it is, it's up. Go ahead and shake around on there, bud, see if it shakes. So once it's up, it is pretty steady. Shake back and forth. And I don't have the wheels clamped on on the bike but the rack itself is pretty sturdy the whole truck shaking so once the rack is up in there it is pretty sturdy and don't have many wobbles as you can see the whole truck shaking so it is pretty sturdy once it's up and you guys definitely want to make sure you use the strap that they give you to strap your bikes down securely to the rack itself to the main bar of the rack and that goes for any bike rack you never want to trust just these to hold your bike or just the wheel holders you always want to strap it down because going down the road all the bumps and everything there is a lot of movement back here so this is definitely extra security that i highly highly recommend never do not use one of these straps or some kind of strap to keep your bike held down in addition to the clamps all right so this is my first attempt at trying to mount my electric and my g-force bike onto this rack now this rack is not made for four inch tires it says maximum three inch but these straps where they are located they this one i barely got the clip in there and the front one the same it seemed to me it, i feel like the straps should have been further towards the ends or these should be a little bit longer first of all these are just like a plastic and there's really no rubber that goes on these to protect your rims that would have been nice to see some type of rubber or something that's like this that's on these 
that would help protect your rims whenever you tighten up the straps. So now I got the electric step through on there and it's up against the inside. And I did figure out a way to get this strapped onto the seat post. So that one's not too big of an issue. And the electric 2.0 does have three inch tires. So it does fit on here and you could tighten these down. But again, it seems like they are a little bit too far this way. Like the straps should have been back here maybe there and there i would have liked a little bit better so i would i would have preferred if you could adjust these out to make these wider and also if there was some kind of blocking mechanism on here to keep your bike from rolling so because the only thing you're really uh stopping your bike from going this way is these straps and this here so there's no blocking or anything to keep the bikes from moving and my next biggest problem is the bike that's on this side even if if this had three inch tires and it was mounted good down there and everything there's really no way for me to attach this bar i can't really put it down there to that because i can't get it over far enough because i have to have the bike exactly where it's at for them straps to work so i can't attach it there and when i have this bar attached up on the top here the clamp is not big enough to go around this tube here and I can't get it to angle far enough this way because this does not turn that way. It's just however it comes off of this bar is how it is. So let me loosen this up a little bit. Now I can put it around here, but I really don't like the way it is right there. I mean, there's it's almost on an angle, but it's kind of pulling it this way as I tighten it. So I'm not, not really a big fan of doing it that way. And you can see, if I pull it down around here, it's actually going up on an angle at that point. And this is resting against the frame and I'm still not far enough back for it to attach to the seat post or this seat tube here. So if this bar was about a foot higher, I probably would have been okay because I could have put this one on the side here, just like this one, and then took it straight over to the seat tube. But with this bar being down this low, you're really limited on how far you can come up with height wise to attach to your seat post tube. And these bikes do sit a little bit lower compared to a lot of my other bikes. So I'm kind of concerned about that as well, but I am gonna try a few different bikes on this thing to see how they would work. But there's my issue guys. I got the one on, got it clamped. Nowhere for me to really put this that I feel secure enough to where this isn't gonna rub on this bike or really just nowhere for me to put it. And I can't move this electric 2.0 forward or backward because the straps are fixed where they're at and there's not enough room to move it forward or backward. And then also if I did move it, then this one wouldn't be long enough to hit this seat tube here. So this bike has to be where it's at. I could turn it around, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. All right, so this is my second bike, second attempt. Now I was able to put the Rad 1UP 700 series on here with the electric 2.0 step through. However, this is the only place I could attach it. That bar is still on an angle and still pretty close to the electric frame. There's a little bit more room here, so not as bad, but I'd be afraid going down the road, eventually maybe something hitting some bumps and this thing moving just a little bit that way and nicking up this frame possibly. And just don't know if I'm a really big fan of the way these hold here. Now this is like a ratcheting system here, but this lever is plastic, so I, I'm, I'm feeling like maybe that might possibly break if you were trying to ratchet it down too tight. You can't go too tight on it. That's probably pretty tight there. I mean, it seems like it holds it pretty decent. So now I would normally have these bikes strapped down with straps also, but if you were going down the road, hitting bumps, you can see how the electric's moving back and forth. And I don't think straps are gonna help that too much. So not sure if I like the way these clamps work. Like I said, if this was up a little bit higher, I would have been able to put this one over here on the side going to that seat tube and it would have been a little bit better, but maybe this rack's not really meant for step throughs. And the Rad one up 700 series tires does fit in here a little better, but still again, there's no supports for it to prevent it from rolling pretty much just these straps. And these straps are, like I said, just like a plastic. Now these upper ones on these mounts do have like a metal band in them. So I'm sure these ones are gonna be a lot stronger. 
I don't think there's anything like that in these bottom ones though. All right, so I have this all the way tightened up and I finally got a second bike that actually fits pretty good on her here. This is a Mitaku. It has a basically almost like a regular bicycle frame with a top tube here. And this will angle up here. Straps nicely on there and then you ratchet it on. So this bike fits on here pretty good. No issues at all. I would definitely feel safe carrying two of these bikes if that's what I had. And there's a long enough tube here to where I can probably attach the shorter one. If I had this bike on the inside, I could attach it to here. So if you had two bikes like this, this rack would probably work really, really well. However, with the bigger bikes, the bigger frames, the larger step throughs, not so sure they're gonna work very well for this rack. All right, so now I got the Hay Bike Cityscape on here and this one works. I'm able to bring this over here and attach it around this tube because this tube's not too thick, but it works pretty well. And if I were going down the road hitting bumps, So these two bikes work pretty well on here. All right guys, so as you see there, I think for some people, this is gonna be a really great rack and for others, maybe not. So just to recap real quick, the main thing that I really don't particularly care for, and like I said, some people might love this style, but I don't particularly care for these clamps and the way that you have to mount both bikes on here because this second clamp sometimes is really hard to get attached to certain bikes. Now, if you have two bikes that work with this rack, it'll work great. But if you have others, it's gonna be really hard to figure out where to attach that to your second bike out here. And the only other really big thing that I really wish was different was that this would work with four inch fat tires because most of my e-bikes do have four inch fat tires. So that is another downfall in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think this bike rack will be right for you. So I'll leave a link down below where you guys can see more details about this rack and pick one up for yourself. Thanks for watching everyone. Like I said, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think and I will see you guys around on the next one. Thanks for watching.